actually really good in the last game. With all the premium marksmen out of the, the champ's line, I actually wouldn't mind seeing Dingas pick up a top laner in the first phase here. Something like the TFR is a good combination as well, the gold card and the okay. charm. I would like to see Dingas go for topside early, because I think the, the second phase plan pick marksman just isn't it for Ridge. As I think playing the range top laners is just much better for him. Rel locked in first for Team Liquid. Again, I always think that Team Liquid looks best with Core JJ on engaged, snappy yeah. champions. Yeah. So Even when it's not the meta, honestly. Yeah. It's just, and that's not to say that he's bad at enchanters. He I don't know. think that's- world championship in the Arden Sensor meta. Right, so yeah. He can play enchanters. He's but not bad at enchanters. I it mean... just feels like he's such a he's such a leader. He's such a shot caller. He's such a guy that needs a go button. That looks really... like he had something to say. All right. <laughs> I think it looked good. If I speak, I'm in big trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I actually played against Gorgia at that Worlds. Yeah. He was in my group. And, yeah. Uh, you weren't impressed with his enchanter play. I can yeah. already infer it. Yeah, I mean. I was gonna ben say, says I was, he should have been the real say, world champion. I was going to say he had ruler, but back then I was playing AD. Yeah. So if I say he has ruler, that's why he won. Then I'm saying. That You're saying it's I'm, AD. I'm, I'm yeah. saying it's AD. <laughs> so I wasn't thinking too far yeah. there. But <laughs> he only won because his AD carry was way better than I am. <laughs> wait, wait, hold up. Uh, <laughs> second. You're getting Sarah your Khan. timelines mixed up. Yeah, yeah, my bad. It's Sarah Khan for taking Thomas. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, Zyra Khan, nicely done. So they've got some of that hyper carry potential. Again, shout out to Tomo for the pentakill last time we saw him on this champion. But Team Liquid, the accusations against APA have first and foremost always been he only plays Ziggs. So then the question remains, do you let him have Ziggs? And this game, Dignitas will let him have the Ziggs. The Cassante also locked in for impact there in the top lane. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the Cassante here on the third pick. I feel like you know, forcing Rich into blind picking is much better than making him, you know, comfortable on this. Yeah. This trans like. Yeah, I always feel like when you go red side and you blind pick, you know, you're, you're like, you blind pick your soul laner, like when you don't have to, it always yeah. feels like a, a little bit bad. But also to be fair, Impact is not the guy that gets the most out of it, right? Yeah, that, that so is true. So it's like, you could be flexing um, Durrell to jungle, yeah. and then if Core picks, counter picks support on five to get like a better lane matchup, well, like, support's already shown, so there's not actually even it's any point in that. It's definitely important to notice that Durrell is a flex pick, and therefore yeah. Teal can pick a full blind duo in the four five to get yeah. it, which is it's, it's good, right? It's more about not giving Rich counter pick than giving you know, impact kind of pick. Yeah. Because Rich is the kind of guy who likes to play the NAR, the TF, yeah. the, yeah. the Quinn, like these kind of champs, so. Do you guys think with Dignitas's back against the wall here, you're on your elimination game, that if Rich wants to, you just let him play like a Garen or something that's yep. the, the solo Q hard yeah. counter to Cassante? Yeah, I mean, we've seen the Laoi before, we've seen the NAR, Quinn, <laughs> TF, like he has a lot of Is that you? Who's <laughs> oh, <laughs> Double Zvan? <laughs> We, we, we got this guy. Side by side. <laughs> we'll side by side later. Uh, the Caitlyn. Kate Lux has been a common kind of pick to Sarakhan for many years. It is not Teal style, I want to say. Mm. We almost got the Penta AD ban. That's uh, more like Tom it. Tom Kench snuck in. Lots of different options here. So I, almost, no. I always kind of feel like past, past the first couple like primo AD carries, the bands become so irrelevant. There's just so many that kind of slot in and do the same thing. Yeah, once you're past the the, the premier four, the the close of ours and, yeah. uh, and the smolder, you're entirely where like it's like play whatever cares. you want. You, you yeah. have Zai, you have Felius, you have yeah. you have Zeri, you have Jinx, you have whatever. Yeah, at They'll this point kind of the lane phase isn't that important. Just pick for yeah. your, your your comfort, pick for comp. Ooh, Nocturne. Now, do they get another dive buddy here from the top lane? Would like if they had another flanker or something that could actually... If you could think of something that could Kenan, win perhaps? lane, yeah. Kennen would win early. Not Renekton. Not we often see Kennen pair with Nocturne because he turns lands off and then Kennen finds a good flank. Yeah, just Nocturne plus a flanker, basically. the matchup basically. isn't so good, I think. Aatrox is the standard kind of pick. Okay. I don't love it. No, Ooh. no, 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 not that one. Not that one either. No, no, no. Nope, no. looks like we're getting that one. I think that's a mistake. Yeah, I think Dig should have tried to pick something with more, you know, dive, like you said, the sail, something that yeah. fits the Nocturne, the Rakan, the RA. This feels like a, a mismatch. It is good against the Zerion, good against the Rail. I will say that, that is, that is for sure. But it's more of a peeling disengage champ. Yeah, it doesn't it's fit like the comp they're building at all. Yeah, it feels, it feels kind of somewhat disjointed because you have Zaya, who generally has to kind of like somewhat peel back. You have, Poppy kind of wants to peel back, and they have Ari and Nocturne and Rakan that kind of all want to yeah. go in, and you kind of almost end up with like this split team comp. Yeah. And Code J heard us talking shit about his enchanters. Here he is. <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait, 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 us? <laughs> I was saying game I was talking shit. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Actually, I wasn't, but I meant I wanted to. <laughs> but no, you wanted to. <laughs> well, you made it very clear that you wanted to, yeah. which equates to the same yeah. thing.
Well, the Zeri Lulu classic is back alive. The no matter classic. how many times you try and kill Zeri Lulu, they will always find a way back into competitive play. Which draft do you guys like better here? Obviously, the Poppy didn't end up being what either of you wanted to see. Yeah. I will say Teal is this is the classic comp. The double tank, control mage, hyper carry. This is Teal classic 45 minute type of game. I don't know. I actually feel like I like Dignitas' comp more. Yeah. Yeah. I don't disagree. I, I just feel like when you play these these two threat comps, so many times, when you play a two threat comp against a team that has really good like go buttons, and you insta kill one of them at the start of the fight, it falls apart so fast, right? So yeah. it's like when you look over at what Dignitas have, do they have enough to kill Ziggs or or you know Yawn to start the fight? I think they probably do. If you kill one of them, all of a sudden there's no damage really left yep. in the comp, and you can kind of slowly grind out the fight. So, you know, if it's if it's nameplates off, I feel like I'm betting on the team on the left. But you know, Dignitas okay. obviously I don't think has been playing as well this series. So yeah, I mean, not everyone else just can play Siri and, and Six, you know. So I definitely yeah. agree with you there. And Poppy. It's not like a dive champ, but champ does do damage. It does find Yawn or IPA in one fight, slam into the wall, and then use a Q, that's a lot of damage. So if they can find the angles, they can cut off the escapes of the six in the series. So it's not too terrible. It does Especially if he wants to kind of cook. Like there's, um, some people do like Sundered Sky and yeah, some more aggressive stuff. Like you can do like Sundered Sky, Iceborne, and all that kind of stuff. Chad Poppy. Yeah, yeah, you can do some really aggressive Poppy builds. And if you do those kind of builds, Poppy actually does a ton of damage. And you don't have to use the ulti for disengage. You can just pop people up. Omti here this was is looking for some awkward. sort of like a gank. It seems like he dumped over the wall. All right. Gonna mount too much. Both sides getting a little bit of help. Nobody really wants to keep slugging it out after that. Rich does have the corruption the potion here in top lane. So yeah. might be a little more aggressive than usual. These yeah. Thorns items are just so overpowered. Yeah, you don't see many of those anymore. Corrupting pot is, is pretty pretty normal, I think, on Poppy though, unless yeah, it's a bad cost, matchup. Yeah, cost, because yeah. the mana costs are actually really high, um, and it's it's pretty easy to just be kind of harassing with grass procs. You pop the corrupting potion, your grass is up. You throw the buckler, you get a little bit of poke, and you just use that to kind of keep your mana high. If you're in a bad matchup, you you sometimes will still have to go you know D shield or whatever. But mm -hmm. since it's Cassante, it's kind of like who cares? <laughs> yeah, uh, it really is like that. Like that yeah. yeah. Rich just checking out the tri brush there, making sure there was nothing yeah. going on. But uh, APA back on the Ziggs, back on the trademark pick in this game. He did get to play as Aurelian Soul, which is another one of the ones that he's known for back in game number one. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that ended up working out for them. Isles and Tomo, these guys are going to need to stay more in control of the bottom lane than oh. they were in game number two, I feel like. Just things went so bad so early in the side lanes for Dignitas. It made the whole situation just so tough to play from. Yeah, in this pop matchup, if you use Akan W and you don't kill someone with it, you will lose push immediately afterwards. So I think. You gotta have a really good engage with it if you wanna start W. Otherwise, Curious is better, because now you're in a yeah. situation where you can't walk up anymore, because the mm. cooldown is so long, right? Yeah, there's no threat at all anymore. It does get a little bit awkward. I always feel like seconds. Rakan, Rakan, people yeah. really underestimate how much healing the Q gets done. It's yeah. one of those lanes where it's like, if you're letting this guy hit Qs, it's almost like Soraka. Where Soraka it's cool. like, it's, it's just Soraka Q, you know? It's like, you have to dodge those. XU, going for an early gank here. This I do not mind at all, but they need level two. Yeah, Isles Yon and Tomo still just need a little bit more. Let's see it. XU shows up, does two. bring her, does not hit. Yeah, Yon and horrible. Core are just going to come yeah. out on top. There's just no way. I mean, they, they, he went way too early. He wasn't spotted based on the way that Teal was moving. I feel like that should have been obvious, but they needed to. He needed to be a little bit more patient. Maybe he felt the pressure because he did three camp bot, but it's like you still spent the time doing this. Yeah. Umpty had cleared an additional camp and is going to be down here. And with them level one, like, what, what, how is that going to work out? Now, Dignitas might actually get dove here on this wave. That is like an absolute There's disaster. There's no cleanse moment. of Tomo. He might just get queued by a oh, no. jump on. Isles, yeah. at least getting a heal from that. 400 HP on the Rakan. We'll Umpty's going to lead more. the charge. Shattering strike into the crash down. First blood for Umpty and tragedy for Dignitas in these first three minutes oh. of bottom lane. That is such a backbreaker when you're already down two games and this is how it starts. You try to three camp bot on the Nocturne and it just was not coming together for him. And then an easy dive for Umpty after doing the additional camp. He's going to be able to go scuttle. He's uh, it's brutal. Only good thing is that it was Umpty who got first blood, and it yeah. wasn't Tomo who died. Yeah. So, you know, you can get away with Isles dying early game. It's not going to be the end of the game here, but still a very bad early game for Dignitas once again. Actually looking for another play here. I really think on Nocturne, you should just be like going to camps, okay? I really yeah. think just farming your own camps in a straight line twice is the way to play on Nocturne. Just full clear base, oh, full clear base. And just then start Raptors and respawn your, your yeah. small camps, right? If you get 
Uh, I grub, I believe. They're gonna okay. try to dive. He's Level in desperation six. mode. Oh god. If this doesn't work, it's. Yeah, I actually, say yeah, angle, but... <laughs> if, if this doesn't work, and now Umpty just... already stole it's away those raptors you were talking like to. I can already him. tell you yeah. it's not gonna work. He's too healthy. There's no way. And now he realizes this, and now he's just gonna oh, try to go over god. this. And he's gonna be pushed off by Core, so. This is absolute disaster start here for XU. Nice by Gorge here. You know, Omti scratches his back. He scratches Omti's back afterwards. Everybody nice. wins. Yep, everybody wins. And I really think if you just forked it twice, I think if you get one of the grubs in the early game, you get level six off of two full clears. I think that's how it works these days. I think that would be a much better game plan for XEO than trying to make early games happen. I mean, I will say, I don't hate trying to do something a little bit surprising, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I actually think that bot lane gank could have worked if they just ha like gotten level two. Like, if they waited for level two, I feel like you just do a little drive-by there, you force some summoners, maybe you're, if you're lucky you get a kill, then you base and you just go right back to power farming. But yeah. doing that into trying to do an invade and threatening a dive and all this feels like, okay, my first play didn't work out, <laughs> so now down. I feel desperate, so <laughs> yeah. now I really need a play to work out. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that that's where I kind of more have a problem with it, because I do think, you know, mixing in these plays can be smart. Yeah, I just think even if you get only summoners, it's still a terrible outcome, because you have to base amongst your top side at a point. Mm -hmm. Well, but nonetheless, but it's it's interesting, you know, not not to belabor the point too much, but it's like he's also doing the the base after three camps in longsword bite anyway. Yeah, so yeah. because he's doing that, I don't think it's actually like yeah, that horrible because that seems to be what a lot of these players are doing now. Mm -hmm. Well, XU does at least acquire the grubs, all three of them there at the start, which is something, especially against Arel, who's normally a very effective grub control champion. So still going to be behind the tempo of the game overall as Jan and Core JJ, their control over this bottom lane is not changing anytime soon. Umpty again, just moving into the enemy jungle, sitting down a little bit of vision. Dove does have level six, so the gank on the Ari pretty much guaranteed to just be looking to pop the ulti for the first time and find another follow-up play later on. We'll see if they can get anything here. No. Nope. Dove can just walk to the side. Not really any pressure on him there. As XU might be able to make an entry up here, but Impact going in for the solo kill on Rich as the Poppy flashes away. Impact still after him. Needs that third in Tofo strike. There's your Pathmaker. There's your Playmaker. Impact takes him down. Kind of picked up. Losing 1v1. Not, Not ideal. Good look for Dignitas. Yeah, that's tough. It's kind of just like last game, right? Where they lost both side lanes very, very early on, and now it's going to be incredibly difficult for them. Even used his flash, Ghost is a shorter cooldown, so uh, that feels a lot worse, too. And it's going to be Umpty just starting up the dragon now. Bot lane has full control. Top lane just died, and there's no TPs, so no real way for them to answer. They know that Dove base, he has no TP either. And Sile's going to look for a little bit of trade, but it's going to really amount to nothing. And TL are just going to still continue grinding out these slow incremental advantages. Yeah, I was going to earlier praise the top lane control from Rich, who had Fryo for a lot of the first few minutes of the game. It's what allowed XU to be able to grab those first three grubs after things didn't go the way he wanted with his invades and his gank attempts. But then Impact just getting the solo kill, getting the punish on him. You cannot underestimate this guy, man. He's been, he became a world champion in 2013, and he's been like a top, top laner in the region like ever since. The guy's just, he's damn good at League of Legends. 11 years ago. Insanely consistent. 11 years, 2013, I was still in college. I was... You're gonna make me feel real old now. Viper, no, Viper. Viper. <laughs> Viper wasn't born yet, so. <laughs> yeah, it's a crazy thing. To, and he's always been such a, a rock for every team he's been in. Mm -hmm. No EG, Teal in the past. Till now. Yep, C9 even. Yeah. Yeah, he's he won with yeah, a lot of actually, different rosters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think there's never been a team where you said Impact was the reason this team didn't succeed. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, e even when his teams were doing really poorly, even yeah. on FlyQuest, right? Where his team was oh, doing yeah. really poorly, everyone's like, ah, oh, man, this team's really falling apart. He's but Impact's doing pretty good. He's been around. Yeah. Good luck. And on a lot of top rosters. I mean, I will say, he's never really been the, the hard carry. On no. the, the Fiora or the, the right. Jace, but he can play, you know, champs like the Jace and the Bruisers, and he's been really good at the tanks as all his career. You know what you're getting with Impact. Yeah, yeah. he can he can play what the team needs yeah. him to play to execute and win the game. And nowadays, tanks are so overpowered, you can so kill your opponents with them. <laughs> well, or do we really want to call Cassante a tank here? Tank, Assassin, yeah. Bruiser. Yeah, somebody get the, do the pasta. Mods, yeah. don't time them out for the pasta. This is an appropriate time <laughs> for it. Uh, Core yeah. JJ on his Lulu, just roaming around, trying to be a nuisance. It's a 1,000 gold lead for TL. It's not the end of the world. The second set of grubs are spawning here in about 20 seconds. So we'll see if they can test for those, if they want to try to control them. Top side, river, vision. There's not a whole lot of it from either team right now. 
Yeah, once Rakan gets level 6, it's where Axion and I also need to start looking for plays. And uh, around the second grubs, perhaps. The mid lane is also an easy target. APA is kind of immobile on the 6. Not yeah. that immobile, but he's long range. So they can push mid, they can open up Dove to move side lanes, make plays as a 3 man unit. Their 3 or 3 is way better than uh, TL's 3 or 3 because they have no damage on the Lulu, Rel, and the 6 and 3 or 3. So I think Isles should try to play on the mid lane. You know, leave Tomo alone, 1v1. Try to open up Dove. All right, Umpty's just walking on through. Not too worried about it. Isles looking for Ooh. a potential engage, but Yawn's ready to just go after him. Zeri ulti gets popped. Tomo back underneath the turret. Meanwhile, the 2v2 back up in the river as Umpty gets the kill on XU. This is not going uh, Dignitas's way. And used the ulti as well while dying. Yeah, he used the ulti at about 5% HP there to go back in, dies anyway. So now all three lanes here winning for TL. Umpty gonna take this time to start up the grubs. We can see Rich is heading over there to try to stop him, but TL could actually oh, <laughs> reinforce. Rich uses the yeet button to get oh. rid of him now as Yawn has to flash back. Isles and Tomo trying to make a move. Enough damage onto Yawn to at least force Team Liquid's bottom lane to retreat, but hey, they got the wave shoved up. They're probably fine just taking the back here anyway. Yeah, he's an award though, so he will get canceled here. Yeah, he's gonna back it all the way up to actually yeah. start his recall. Um, but they, they need plays now. Dignas needs something to be kind of that spark to get them back into this. They, they got Yon's flash now. I also use his own flash and his ulti, but next ultimate, maybe Exu can, you know, use the ultimate to get in and then he can bring Isles in with the Rakan shield. And they can't gank top lane, so it's gotta be bottom mid at this point. Yeah, and Impact's got enough control over the top side now to just make sure that nobody's going to walk up and really mess with Umpty here. So those grubs should all go over to the Team Liquid side. Here's another look at the 2v2 mid. Yeah, we Duff saw the initial the scrapping, but as they stack up, I assume Umpty just kind of goes in on both of them. Yeah, just flash in, crash down, Magnastorm, Ziggs all hits. And then at that point, that's just a bit of a panic ult. Like, you're already dead. You kind of just have to accept it. And that's one of the really painful things about Nocturne. It's a two-minute cooldown on your ult. Yeah. Like, and you don't build CDR in these in these more modern uh, Nocturne builds, so it's it's painful when you use that thing and it doesn't work out. Yeah, all you have is the uh, Ultimate Hunter, right? Um, he didn't even get a stack on it yeah. with his first ultimate, so... Yeah, over very, minutes. Very punishing death for sure, and <laughs> they just missed their spells. They just used the Nocturne Q, the Ari Charm, and they're like, oh wait, they have no spells now, I'll just go and kill them. Yeah. This, this game number three really, really seems rough for Dignitas between the mis-execution there in the bottom lane and then also that fight in that 2v2 around mid. XU definitely seems to be rattled from the outcome earlier on in this series. And it's one of the difficulties of having best of fives versus just, you know, your one game a day, regular season type of thing. You've got to be able to reset in between the games mm -hmm. and be ready for each new challenge. Yeah, absolutely. I mean. Uh, the winner of this uh, would be playing against 100 Thieves, I do believe it is. And uh, then, you know, potentially you could move on and fight either C9 or FlyQuest. TL, I think, would really love to get in their crack at FlyQuest, given how close that series was. I agree. Um, pretty devastating loss for them in the game five. Yon, in particular, looked absolutely heartbroken yeah. after that one. And I thought he played an incredible series he played really against well. FlyQuest. I think Yon's bars and his Kusta were nuts. Some of his best matchups. I think those are his champions to. The best at currently, but enough about oh. that. Impact, Impact is very far forward. He just doesn't care. Yeah, Cassante can just stand there and walk right on out of the CC. Yeah, why not? No, nope, no reason not to. Team Liquid grouped up as five, ready to control this bot side river. They've already got the first Drake. They'll be looking for the second. The Grubs tied three to three. Dove is still over there on the flank. Yon's got the firepower though. Keep your eyes on the Zeri if this breaks out into a team fight. It's very hard to imagine things that win this team fight here. Yeah. It's, yeah, it has to be a perfect engage and one shot on one of the carries, right? But like when you're behind, it is very hard yeah, to do yeah, that. Yeah, no position, no vision, no, yeah. no TP flank. There's a ward behind. XU. XU goes in. They immediately try to force Yawn back. There's the poppy ejection as Impact is coming in with the ghost. Isles is low. Oh, poor JJ flashes to pop him. <laughs> Yawn shoots the zap through the wall, and Impact is still in hot pursuit. Tomo and XU still trying to get the distance, but no, Yawn with the execution on the Zeri, man. This guy just crashing him down with the lightning. I mean, TL is just stomping him, but dig. Poor target selection there. You're going for the Zeri, who's again the wall and a very big wall so you alt onto him he just zips right over the thing he's immediately out of there to safety uh, yeah. needs to be the zigs unless the zeri's out look, in the open but look, look where at, he's standing look at tomo as well there's no follow-up who's yeah. gonna kill this guy yeah. if, you, if you hit the spells who kills him rich yeah there's just no way he's trying to hammer as well dove as well look where dove is yeah. he's over, over the dragon wall 
it feels like they can tell the pressure is definitely getting to them. The pressure is getting to them, and there's not really anyone to pick up, you know, the leadership position here in this in the team. Yeah, it feels tough. like force engages. The pressure Both your carries them. aren't even there. They're back against the wall. It's another <laughs> Nocturne ulti now, with not even like you were talking about a stack of Ultimate <laughs> he Hunter. Knows it, yeah. And he yeah, knows you it. can you can see the frustration on his face. Yeah, Spawn Spawn looking like he's just kind of chilling. And yeah. on the other side, definitely looking stressed. Um, definitely a, a tough yeah. spot for Dignitas. At this point, if you're Dignitas, I don't even know what you can do. I think you can go on side lane and hold that APA dies to an Nocturne, but... Yeah, you, ha you have to hope for mistakes from your but opponents and then try to capitalize on them if they make them. The hard thing about tank versus tank is that it's really hard to kill them on side lane. Yeah. So that means the team that's winning has only one way to lose, which is APA in this case dying on side lane. So that means you know, Omti, Omti will be there the whole game. Yep. He's got Nitro already, he's gonna hover him at every point. And APA has been playing a solid series today. Yeah, Earlier on, really good. Like all throughout the all throughout the games, he hasn't been making any of those errors where he gets caught out sometimes and ends up making that path back into the game, like you guys are talking yeah. about for the opponents. And he's been playing the team fights well. Back to his falling stars on the Aurelian, the charms on his Ari in the last game, and now with these Ziggs ultis, he's playing patient, he's playing safe, and he's just delivering the consistent damage the team needs him to. Also been doing his best Joey cosplaying and farming really well in both this game and last game, and way way ahead of, ahead of the clock as well in both games playing a champ that, that scales really well so maybe talking in all chat is not that good yeah maybe he gets inside his own head he's got to focus up <laughs> hit I the enter key in, with the hammer i thought he was in jensen's head i guess he what he can do when he doesn't talk yeah it's crazy <laughs> but, yeah. he has like 3,000 more apm that's not being spent on speed <laughs> on type racer he just turns into chovy when he's not typing it's crazy and here the herald of course with the six is a great combo it's going to give them at least one tower with that crash the six chest will charge giving you a free tower all jokes, all jokes aside, though, this is, a, I think, going to be a bit of a confidence booster for APA, who, yeah. you know, was, he, he got he got gapped really hard by Jensen. Jensen definitely gave him the smack down. Obviously, Dove, you know, is a different mid laner. Um, but still, to be able to have a really good series, I feel like it's fair to say, you know, he's up there as one of the top, if not the top performer from TL in this series so far. His ASOL game, you know, he got out to a good start, was really yep. strong. The Ari game, it felt like he wasn't missing any charms. This game, you know, it's been a quieter game, but he hasn't really done anything wrong, so... Yeah, I, I agree. I feel like it's maybe between like him and Core as yeah, kind of the best performers. Yeah. Core has also had a really good series, had some good engages. Oh yeah. If Impact had a better first game, I think he would be the front runner. Yeah. But he the first game. First game was a bit of a stinker. The, <laughs> the <plan> <laughs> oh, oh no! Rich missed his disengage, and that means Impact's ready to go in for the solo kill. There comes the Ziggs bomb, forcing out the flash from the Poppy. Third and Tofo strike is ghost. not going to knock him back. Might so Impact here. misses the kill. He's still going. Oh. But he's still oh. looking. All right, here comes Cassante. His He's W's going back up, though. Uh, All right, Rich lives just, to see another day. That's just cringe. <laughs> <laughs> Too cringe to death. Too cringe champ right there. <laughs> <laughs> and here comes the... Oh, nice smile. All right. He'll stop the Herald from getting the second charge. But again, the things we're celebrating for Dignitas are they're not dead. It's still Team Liquid finding more on the map. It's still Team Liquid with control over the lanes. It's still Team yeah. Liquid knocking down the mid lane tier one turret, the bot lane tier one turret, <laughs> and taking control over the enemy jungle. Yeah, this is a pretty big gold lead now. Uh, you can see Ziggs, most rich player in the game. APA has 7,300 gold. Most rich on the other side is actually the Ari, but he's still about a 1,000 gold ahead of that. And he is really getting paid. He took a tower down there, and he has quite a bit of gold in pocket, so it should be almost his second item completed yeah, at this point. When Ari is your most fed person, and you're looking at two tanks and an enchanter, yeah. you have a problem. A big problem. Yeah, Ari is not going to 100 to 0 them through yeah, the Lulu shields and whatnot. It's like XU being that behind is really hurting as well. These days, Ari buys like, like Malignants and Lich Bane. They don't kill tanks with those items. No. They, you go for like the the short picks on the carries and you keep going with the resets. And Tomo's not exactly rich either in this game. So, coming up with this Drake about to spawn here in under 45 seconds, both the Rakan and the Rel have flashes ready to go. These are the two big engaged champions for either side. Umpty is just completely unafraid. He knows that XU and Isles aren't going to kill him before he gets reinforced by somebody on his team. So they're just trying to establish vision control here yeah. in this bot side jungle of Dignitas. I mean, honestly, when MT has core behind him, the only person you maybe start caring a little bit is if Tomo's there, right? Because even Dove, it's not like Dove is going to 100 zero you with, with a, a tanky yeah. Rel here and a Lulu behind you. I think that needs to think outside the box here. They can't just go five mid and hope that someone dies. And look at APA. APA is just, they don't even have to fight. They do land the charms. It's yeah. a little bit of poke, but APA is just going to push up towards yeah. that tier two and TL have full bot side vision. They're barely pushing 
4 versus 3 here. They haven't even taken vision yet. And AP is just gonna come now. Umpty ready! Magnet Storm with the crash down starts it off, and Yawn's ready to end it fast! APA provides a little bit of extra burst from downtown with a bomb as Tomo wants to use the feathers, but it don't do anything. Umpty goes on a killing spree. 3-0 and 4 here on the rail. He waited for his moment, he pulled the trigger, and it's three Dignitas bodies hitting the floor. Huge engage there from Umpty, and TL pretty much close it out with that yeah. one. Great engage, catches multiple members, they burst down aisles, shoot them out of the sky, couldn't even get in there with the engage. Everything going TL's way. Yeah, Dignitas needs a different plan than face checking the rail in the bush. It didn't work last game, it didn't work this game, it didn't work the first game either. I feel like it's, in general, not a super sound strategy. Yeah, it doesn't matter if it's Umti or it's Koji on the rail, it's just such a hard I guess they just feel like path. because they have the extra man, they can look to try to push their way in, but yeah. they're walking up and he just goes but immediately maybe here, right? forward. It's just both. Yeah. The poor job of being an entry fragger here for uh, for Dove and Isles. I think they just have to try to do something funny, you know, go on side lane. You know, remember my flank at Worlds, DL's flank in that bush yeah. for like two minutes? Yeah. That's what we need here. <laughs> yeah. You need to go in the bush, start flank for just two go minutes. into a bush, yeah. sit there for five minutes. It was the right two. idea, just didn't yeah. get the results. <laughs> More about that later, but <laughs> I'm saying like you need to have some sort of like, funny play. You can't just go mid. Yeah. Look at them. You have and be to like, go random. Yeah, they aren't that bad, bro. They're not gonna just die by staring yeah. at them, right? So just go in a bush on side lane or in the jungle and no, sit there for three minutes. Time for some, some secret agent recon. Yeah. You gotta go crazy. Dignitas needs to follow in the words of the Dignitas prophet Michael Santana. If you're a, oh, how are your opponents supposed to know what you're gonna do if even you don't know what you're gonna do? They need to just Wise get words. out there and start playing some goofy League of Legends. Yeah, when you're down, you gotta get desperate, you gotta get creative, you gotta find angles that they're not gonna expect. Uh, that is absolutely true, but it does feel like TL is not really giving them too many of those openings. They're gonna play a pretty bulletproof game here. They know it is fully in their control. They're one off of Soul. They're one off of winning the series and they are looking pretty close to doing it. As Impact's even pushing up Bot, they have no TP on Rich. He's the one down there. So it's not even like you can go for a play on top side because no. Impact could always join. Yeah, he doesn't even care. Yeah, He's pushing. And I will say TL is very good at playing this style. They know exactly where Dignitas can strike and what they can't. You know, they have spent the entire game defending APA and Yon. They know that's the carries. Here and comes Isles. a TP. XU tries to oh. jump in alongside Isles. They do a lot of damage to Yon, but they ain't killed him just yet. The wild growth, the peel from Core JJ, keeping the Zeri alive as Umpty barely walks out through the right. But now Dove, Isles, and Tomo are in trouble. APA delivers the bomb, and Isles has to run away next. Umpty crashes down, and Isles tries to fly back to the safety of Tomo. A zap to the wall won't connect, Impact. but Impact's got the ghost, and now he's got Tomo too. Rich, XU, and Isles barely getting away to safety, and Team Liquid, they weather the storm, they survive the attack, and they march over to Baron. They almost got Yon, but even then, if they kill Yon, it still wouldn't change anything, right? They still will get cleaned up by APA and, and Impact at the end there, so... Rich and XU so seeing if Dignitas. maybe there's some kind of a mirror killer. XU has no ulti, he has no flash. There's nobody to even get in and try to contest this. Yeah. I feel like this is just completely futile. Oh. Rich doesn't hit anybody with a poppy ult. Impact's not afraid. He's still got the ult, man. He can still go all out. He might just get burst down. Okay, Impact got a little bit too hypey there. Team Liquid will lose their top laner. That won't feel too great not having the Baron there set up for him in the side lane, but hey, it's still gonna be a 10 to one game. It's still a seven and a half thousand gold lead. It's still Baron for TL before 23 minutes. Uh, in fact, not that broken. <laughs> <laughs> it, it ha the champion has been nerfed multiple times since his release. Release Cassante, he wins those. There you go. It, yeah, he win those. <laughs> that's the worst part. <laughs> but I mean, again, like, Dinta's just staring at, at TL in their face, and it's like so hard to disengage on. Even if they hit him with everything they have, yeah. A, like a four versus two for the most part of the fight. Yeah, I mean, Yon is just positioning well in this area as well. Like, he's yeah. always staying close enough to the wall that he can get oh. over it. And then we're back to live. Yon may be caught. We're right back in there, but Yon is not worried about it. He's just so far ahead. The shattering strike locks oh. down Dove. They try to slam Yon back into the wall there with a poppy, but they still have no damage. XU oh. wants in. The Nocturne finally gets his mark as APA, Umpty, and Core are still scrapping with the rest of Dignitas. Umpty's low, but now Impact has once again joined the fight. They try to chase him down. Another bouncing bomb goes forward, but it won't find health bars. Rich 
on the front, trying to just keep these guys away and make room for Tomo's escape. He finds another wall bang, and it's Umpty. Now again, just playing around on the front lines. He knows he's low HP, but he knows they still can't break him. Team Liquid pick up a couple more. And that was the fight I was talking about, the jungle fight. You know, Dove coming from the flank inside the Repo here, actually catching y'all off guard. And actually coming in from the side as well. Actually worked pretty well for them. I mean, sort of, you know, you <laughs> turn down AK Golden and a Baron buff, right? But they finally made an actual decent play. And, and it's not going to matter. No, I mean, <laughs> it, it's too little too late, but you can totally see how, how the conversation could work out. If you could yeah. get, like, imagine if the gold is more close and you could actually get that first yeah. kill on a carry. Look how long it took him to kill anyone with just APA, right? If Ziggs yeah. is your only damage, you're doing nothing. It's taking forever, but and they're no. so far ahead that it's so hard to actually take down Yon. If it's hard to kill Yon, how do you kill Omti and Impact when they get Cloud, I mean, um, Ocean Soul in you 20 do seconds? Not. You do yeah. not? Yeah, I think you don't either. Yeah, that Impact is has, the um, problem. Impact has 300 something armor right now. Yeah, yeah Impact's uh, very strong with, uh, with Iceborne Gauntlet and Hollow Radiance. It's 206 armor, 95 Jesus. MR. This guy's scary, man. How much does armor, the Q cost? What's the cooldown? <laughs> Can he go over walls? Do you know? He has almost 4k HP. And is he unstoppable? <laughs> I think he is unstoppable, yeah. Very unstoppable. What's the CD on the Q? <laughs> the whole team's Stop looking maker. unstoppable, man. But oh. XU with the rest of Dig. Maybe oh. this is their moment. Oh. They oh. go for the oh. eject. They knock out the at the fight. Now Impact once again in a 1v3. Impact once again. Trying to walk away from it. Pathmaker's already been used. The burst keeps coming. But over the wall with a mega Inferno bomb. <laughs> Impact's still alive, and it's not gonna matter for Dig. Everybody but Dove is dead. A double kill to APA. They get Impact, but at what cost? It's Cassante, baby. <laughs> Impact Thanos. in the middle of the squad, <laughs> invulnerable. And that was before the clouds in the Ocean Soul, by the way. Mm -hmm. So he's gonna have that for next fight. Just yeah. basically a 5v1 against Impact, and he almost won. I mean, they got completely <laughs> split. They, they eject the jungler. And he's, so. a, he's not even like, trying to run. He, he was going into them there. Yeah, I mean, they hit multiple charms in a row on him, and then he just gets the two-man flip back, goes all out, goes over the wall, Umpty comes over uh, that dragon wall, and you can see Core, APA, and Umpty over the wall are just killing both of them. Yeah. That was pretty well played. Impact pulls them down into that corridor. They're able to go over the wall and finish them off, and now mid lane turret already gone. They're working on the inhib there, <laughs> and they're going to TP in and try to put the finishing touches on this. Impact second all-time in LCS assists, now reclaiming the title from who he as Team Liquid takes out the mid lane inhib. Umpty does not care that he is the target. He gets the Shattering Strike on three. Rest of TL rotates hitting over, trying to save their jungler. Wild Growth guarantees it, as now Rich's steadfast presence wants to stop Team Liquid from moving any further forward. Mega Inferno Bomb just out into somewhere in Nebraska. That's not going to matter too much, though, as Team Liquid still just continues kiting back. XU wants to dive, but Yawn immediately turns around to kill Isles. The front line of Team Liquid cannot be broken now, as Rich will be stuck behind enemy lines. A double kill for the Zeri, and Core JJ's looking for more. XU's their next target, and Yawn's running and gunning and he's not stopping anytime soon. A triple kill for the Team Liquid AD carry. A 19 to three game. And it looks like Team Liquid wants to go for the throat. Tomo and Dove trying to stay alive here, but man, they're stuck on the steps of the fountain. And even that doesn't feel safe. The Nexus <laughs> itself barely holding on to life. Ladies and gentlemen, Team Liquid, swift and clean, three nothing. Eliminate Dignitas from playoff. Dominant series there from TL and an absolute confidence builder going into their match against 100 Thieves. We'll see how they're gonna look against them, but this was really clean. And it does feel like TL have kind of settled on, you know what? Our style is playing late game, it's playing scaling, it's playing team fight, and I think that's what they're gonna bring next weekend as well. Yeah, I mean, they were winning early games with scaling champions in these last two games, so looking pretty good. And they, uh, they had, a, I would say, a good split, honestly. Yeah. You know, in the season, they thought they played better than most people thought they would, and they got those short today. I think the frustrating thing for Dignitas is definitely going to be looking back to game one. They were in a really yeah. good spot in game one. A few mistakes there cost them big time. And I know sure. that definitely is going to feel like a turning point in the series. Yeah. Game two, game three were all TL. Uh, but Dignitas was definitely in with a chance in game one. Yeah.